Hello and welcome to another video which will quickly show you how to get top grades. We're looking at question 5, either the description or the narrative question. And one of the things that helps you become original and entertain the examiners is to write from a different perspective. We're going to look at a short story about Alexander the Great, possibly the most famous conqueror in history. If you hadn't heard of him, you're about to find out a lot. And the interesting perspective, you would think, was, well, we'll write a story from Alexander the Great's point of view. But no, we're going for an even more interesting perspective, which is to write from his sword's point of view. So this opens up lots of possibilities, because the sword can comment on events and also on Alexander himself. Now, although you might not be familiar with any of this history, that doesn't matter. You will also be an expert on something. Maybe it's a particular band that you follow, or a computer game that you play. There'll be something about that band or that computer game that you can use as your inanimate object that will be like the sword in order to give you a perspective to write about. So I have a story here sent in by a viewer who wants to know if this technique has worked. Let's find out. I am a vessel that has witnessed the godly powers of time bring destruction and death to the mightiest of empires and the greatest of kings. I, the great sword of Alexander, forged in the fiery furnaces of Hephaestus, protected with the king of kings on his conquest. I, the weapon of Alexander, slayed the satrap of Bactrian and sliced the Gordian knot. So you can see how our viewer has created a realistic character in the voice of this sword. The repetition of I gives us the self-importance, I, the great sword, emphasises it, and the historical detail we don't have to know it's just there to emphasise how important Alexander and the sword was to events in history. Now, the other fantastic advantage of this is the examiner knows they will never read another story which begins in this way. This will be utterly unique, and obviously that will completely engage them and start the examiner thinking, I've got to give this a top grade, don't I? And then they'll read on to confirm that grade. Let's carry on. Yet I now suffocate behind the glass cage of a museum whose name I do not know, tragically mislabeled as the sword of a common Persian general. My prince is now beneath layers of dirt, and my blade is now rested and dull. I was not ignorant of blood and flesh, and I shall recount the glory days of my prince, so that his deeds would not be lost in silence, and swept away by the merciless hands of time. I'm not going to show you all the many techniques that this student uses, but I'm going to focus on the most important one here, which is contrast. The contrast between now and the past, the contrast between my prince and the Persian general, the contrast between being mislabeled and attributed to the wrong person, and the words of truth that the sword is going to deliver to us now as he recounts the glory days of the prince. This contrast gives the writing life and rhythm, and as you know from my videos, contrast is the king of good narrative or good description writing. These deeds I'm going to relate are of paramount importance and must not be left unattested and forgotten so that my inquiry may become extinguished in the obscurity of silence. Nevertheless, I fear that tongues of envy will claim my accounts of the deeds of my prince to be falsehoods and propaganda but I assure you, Alexander the Third of Macedon 
is a man who far outshone those that came before him and those that will come after him. The emperor's intelligence and charisma are well known to all those who have met him and his name was praised in all the corners of the world and his knowledge of literature and his varied acquaintance with music and philosophy. Think too of the capabilities of the young man tutored personally by Aristotle and his father Philip the conqueror of Greece. Now this kind of paragraph sort of demands that you know a bit about the history and you might think well you're losing me mate I'm not really interested but remember you're 15 or 16 whereas this is written for an examiner an adult who will have some idea of Alexander the Great. The examiner will ask does the student use this information to engage me as a reader? And this is a danger of this kind of writing that relies on detailed knowledge of history or the specific context of your sport or computer game or musical band, whatever it is you're writing about. You have to choose details which don't just interest you, but will interest the reader. So this would lose slightly in terms of the engagement. However, in addition to using contrast, notice how the student has planned a massive show-off sentence which will show their control of punctuation and grammar. Because remember, there are 16 marks available for that out of 40. That's a huge chunk. And he is nailing those marks even if the engagement isn't quite there let's carry on. But alas, King Philip was assassinated, and in his 20th year, Alexander claimed the Macedonian throne, killing his rivals and quashing the rebellions in an ingenious move. Before long, he declared his animosity against the Persians to avenge his Greek ancestors of such a warlike temper was the book. He overpowered the massive Persian army, his phalanx tore through their ranks while he would lead his companion cavalry to flank his enemies. Again, this isn't quite story in the sense that there are lots of connected events. However, look at the vocabulary that he's using because he understands the history. The great advantage of being able to use moments in history is that the vocabulary will always be fascinating. Here he studied warfare and so we have these words like phalanx and these tactics like flanking. Now in his email to me this student reveals where they have honed this skill with language. It's not just having the historical knowledge but knowing how to craft the sentences with it. And so he says, I have decided to incorporate the style of Anna Komnini, someone who I've never read, an influential Byzantine princess and historian. Pretty niche, eh? But whatever you know a lot about will be niche to the examiner. So don't think this video is just about having a fantastic knowledge of history. It's about being an expert in something and using that expert knowledge to your advantage. What our student has done though, is taken that expert knowledge and then allied it to what they know from a brilliant writer. So we can imagine that he's lifted phrases and grammar from this writer of such a warlike temper was the boy. None of us would write that way in the 21st century or even in the late 20th century. This is an old fashioned, way of using grammar, which perfectly fits the voice of a sword, which is over 2,000 years old. So although our student is describing lots of historical events so that we don't get the sense of a single story, what we do get with this eye view of the sword is a strong character's voice, just like we did in the first paragraph, we're getting a feel for how this voice speaks and thinks and that makes for compelling writing. Let's see how the story ends. Battle after battle, I would get drunk on Persian blood. Boasting unparalleled knowledge of strategy, he laid waste to the provinces in Asia Minor and campaigned downwards to liberate the peoples of Tyre, Gaza and Memphis. And the Persian king Darius lost one city after another in spite of his large army because in wit 
he was far surpassed by my prince Alexander. Again, we get the sense of this old-fashioned use of grammar that gives us such a convincing voice. Another thing that happens is the use of metaphor that our student uses really successfully. I would get drunk on Persian blood. That's practically Shakespearean, isn't it? Give unto the edge of the sword his family, says Macbeth when he kills Macduff's family. Really similar writing. So the crafting of vocabulary and sentences and writing is brilliant. The creation of an interesting character's voice is brilliant. But what we're missing is a truly engaging story. There's just too much going on. Let's see the last paragraph. But all living things die. Having written so far, an excruciating hand tears and wrenches my soul. Oh, what a loss it was to all humanity when Alexander died so young. Why must the gods be so cruel? Why must the three sisters of fate cut their thread? It seems that although my body is made of the hardest steel, my heart isn't. Hence now my history must be concluded, for I could not bear to describe these sad events any longer. So again we have that really convincing voice, the brilliant vocabulary. Here the historical sense of believing in many gods, polytheism, the references to the three sisters of fate, all create a historically interesting character. We also have contrast used again. Although my body is made of the hardest steel, my heart isn't. So our student has asked, can you point out some of the mistakes and maybe some of the things I've done well? English is not my first language. Amazing, isn't it? What you can pick up when you work hard. Well, my main piece of advice is going to be about how to turn it into a story. And so the easiest thing to do is think, right, OK, Alexander's life was extraordinary, but what is the most extraordinary or moving thing about it? Our student has taken the idea of conquering all lands. Well, that is a brilliant aspect of Alexander's life, but unfortunately, it's led to event after event after event that doesn't have a sense of a crafted story. However, if we turn to Alexander's death, it was mysterious. He died aged only 32. Different historical perspectives offer up the idea that he was poisoned, or that he contracted a disease like typhoid or malaria, or because he died drinking a bowl of wine, or after drinking it, that he actually was an alcoholic, having drunk too much celebrating all these battles in his 12 years of kingship. Well, which of these would you pick on to have the sword talk about? Obviously, I think the poisoning is the most interesting. You know, who has decided to poison him and why? How has the sword become separated from his master? I might add it to that kind of Excalibur-type legend that the next person to clutch the sword will also become mighty and famous in history. And so my final paragraph could be about the desire to be found. And so the voice is actually calling out to the reader, waiting for the right special anointed hand to come along and take hold of it and become the new Alexander. Another interesting twist to the story could be about the bloodlust of this sword. We can see that Alexander here is treated as a famous warrior, a slayer. And so rather than creating a great leader who we would all admire, the sword is going to create a great leader who will inspire yet more destruction and domination across the world. So the key for you here is to take a step back from this wonderful expert knowledge you've got about your topic, whatever it is, and think, right, what is my way in that's going to make the reader interested in this story? Now, the easiest way to do that is to look at the endings in that story. So if it's your chosen band, you could choose the moment when the band splits up. If it's a sporting figure, 
You could pick a moment of failure when they miss the crucial score in the game, or the team are relegated. Or if it's something like a computer game, you might contrast victory, for example, in an international tournament that makes you thousands of pounds, compared to all those years of education you've missed because you were playing the game, so that we might flash forward 20 years to find you disappointed and poor because of your lack of education. Or you could spin it the other way. You've moved to South Korea to become a full-time professional playing Fortnite and have achieved some kind of high status in a foreign land. Or if you are like our viewer with a passion for history, don't just read about the events, but read the words of those living at the time, because it will be full of this unfamiliar way of writing with really long sentences and grammar that fits in a different order to our own. And that will simply lift your writing to new levels. Just as T.Y. has done here, I'm not going to publish his full name in case he didn't want me to do so, but T.Y., thank you so much. If you would like some more top tips on writing stories, check out a video appearing here on the left or here on the right. See you soon on my channel.